excited for the state of the world today? Are we excited for the state of the world today? Well, let's keep that excitement going. Let me introduce our new Deputy Borough President, Marika Scott McFadden! Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Mean 
peace be upon all of you and me. I'm so honored and blessed to witness the State of Form Presidential Address of Mr. Robin Diaz. We are pleased to continue to have Mr. Diaz serve as our Bronxboro President for a third term in a row. This is due to his great work, commitment, and dedication. The Bronx under Mr. Diaz has been a success story of diversity and growth. Let us please give Mr. Diaz and his team big hand, please. Like this. 
Make the most just and merciful God of the heavens and the earth, and the creator of all humanity. Continue to protect and guide all of us. Also, dear God, please protect all the bronze families, and may God lead all of us and lead Mr. Diaz to what is always best of the people. May he keep all of us secure and excited and ensure you committed leadership and success and your faithful commitment to the prosperity of the people. And most of all, may you, Mr. Diaz, to be the power and the voice for the Bronx community. Oh God, please also extend this prayer to any other community leaders who are present here today. Oh God, may you also command the voice of the people to honor your power and to commit to your responsibilities to preserve liberty, growth, justice, surety, unity, and peace. Finally, may the God grant us all with success Amen, and peace be about all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Imam. And now, to recognize our distinguished guests in the audience today, Please welcome our Director of External Affairs, Mr. Dirk McCall. Thank you, Madam Deputy. We have a number of distinguished guests with us today, and we'll go through this as quickly as possible. Uh, first, we're joined by a true daughter of the Bronx, somebody who's uh, served for many, many years supporting uh, the development of the Bronx, our former Deputy Borough President, Aurelia Green. <laughs> Bronx County Clerk, Louis 
Rudy Diaz. We're joined uh, by Bronx County Clerk Louis Diaz, by former City Council Speaker Peter Ballone, Sr. <laughs> Assemblymember Michael Benedetto, sorry for the one of our greats in the Bronx. Former City Council Speaker Gifford Miller, <laughs> former Bronx Borough President Adolfo Carrion. <laughs> New York City Civil Court Justice Fidel Gomez. New York State Supreme Court Justice Wilma Guzman. New York City Civil Court Justice Lynette Rosado. From the State Court of Regents, Chancellor Betty Rosa. We have a number of our Bronx Commissioners. Bronx Department of Buildings Commissioner Teresa Hall. FDNY Borough Commander, Deputy Chief Joseph Wozniaka. Bronx Community uh, Director for Commission on Human Rights, Kajori Chaguri. Bronx Parks Commissioner, Iris Rodriguez Rosa. New York City Planning Commissioner, our Bronx Commissioner, Orlando Marine. Carol Samuel, the Bronx Director for the Department of City Planning. NYPD Bronx Bureau Executive Officer Brian McMahon. <laughs> Department of Sanitation Bronx Bureau Chief of Operations mm. Chief Pupulo. <laughs> Our very own Bronx DOT Commissioner Eduardo Lopez. <laughs> Bronx Public Administrator Matilde Sanchez. From our community colleges and other colleges in the Bronx, we have Bronx Community College President Thomas St. Legby. Coast Coast Community College President David Gomez. Community College President Jose Luis Cruz. Timothy Hall, President of Mercy College. Monroe College President Mark Jerome. Metropolitan College of New York President Benton Thompson. From the Bronx Overall Economic Development Corporation, we have our President Marlene Sintron. And our Chairman Stephen Kaufman. Representing the Consul General of Mexico, Vivian Juarez Mondragon. And not, last but not least, laborers in the House. We're represented by Bobby Murray, the business agent for Local One, the Plumbers, and the president of the Bronx Board of Business Managers. <laughs> by the Council of Supervisors and Administrators, President Mark Canizaro. <laughs> by Danny Payne, president of Local 202, the Teamster. <laughs> by 32 BJ, Kyle Pratt. <laughs> Representing SSEU Local 371, Danique Robertson. And those are all of our acknowledgments. We apologize in advance if anybody got left out. But thank you all for coming. Thank you, Dirk. I would also like to take a moment to thank some of our partners who helped make this event possible. They include the New York Botanical Garden, Bronx Net, and the New York Police Department. Thank you. And lastly, I'd especially like to thank our hosts here today, Bronx High School of Science, for their hospitality. <laughs> but before the borough president comes to the stage, I would like to take a, a moment to note that our office is partnering with Orange U Going to increase civic participation in our city. The Our New York campaign encourages New Yorkers to take the pledge to dedicate at least one hour each month throughout 2018 to civic engagement. Please visit OurNewYork.com to learn more and use the hashtags on the screen to let everyone know that you've taken the pledge. And now, I'd like to bring to the stage a man that needs no introduction to this audience, here to deliver 
his ninth State of the Borough Address. Ladies and gentlemen, our Borough President, Ruben Diaz Madam Deputy, it 
Back in January, Marika succeeded my longtime colleague and partner, Aurelia Green, as our Deputy Borough President. I think that Marika, and you'll find this out, she has a wealth of experience and knowledge both in the private and public sector, and we are so lucky to have you on our team. Let's give it up for you. So, a new child walks into a bar and asks the bartender, how much? The bartender says, for you, no charge. <laughs> <laughs> if you're asking yourself, if you're asking yourself why that was funny, it was probably because you were not paying attention during science class. <laughs> now that comes directly from Neil deGrasse Tyson. Uh -huh. <laughs> a native a native Bronx site and a member of science's class of 1976. We also want to take this opportunity to thank, once again, Bronx High School of Science and its principal, Gene Donahue, for hosting this event. <laughs> we are here to celebrate all that we have done over the past nine years. And to outline our plans and goals for my final four years as your former president. So far, we've done great things. I stand here proud to report that we have executed a transformative agenda that has elevated every neighborhood and community in this wonderful borough. We're keeping people in their homes by building new housing units for a diverse population and setting the standard for tenant protection for the city. Mm. That's right, the Bronx is building. a great foundation to all of our youth, regardless of where they live. And we are engaging and challenging more students. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bronx is learning. <laughs> the Bronx's economy is growing as well. We've cut unemployment by more than half, down to 5.5%. <laughs> participation is at, is at its highest level on record, and more than 110,000 Bronx residents have jobs today than when I first took office. Yes, the Bronx is working. Additionally, we have lowered crime by record numbers, together with the NYPD. Let's give it up for the NYPD. <laughs> and Bronx sites, for the fifth straight year, we have less than 100 homicides in our borough. And this past year, that number dropped to an all-time low. And we've done this compassionately, with a commitment to a fairer, more humane criminal justice system. That is why the Bronx is safer. <laughs> Look how different things are in this world today than just a decade ago. We have set the bar for the entire nation on transformative urban renewal and, and redevelopment. We are the new standard for revitalization. Because of that, the Bronx is rising. <laughs> Yet we face significant but comparable challenges. A homelessness crisis public school students whose needs are not fully met, and significant health disparities. We also face a once unimaginable threat coming from Washington, mm -hmm. one that we will resist and we will prevail. <laughs> See, New Yorkers know that their government can intervene and act as a safety net. That's why my administration has worked day in and day out on education, housing, homelessness, job growth, and urban planning. The New York City public school system has served as the backbone of this city since 1805. Over one million children rely on it to provide a ladder into college and the workforce. So when it comes to education, we must evolve. Inequality on this front 
is a major issue that we still face. Last year, we saw the Bronx had an increase in graduation rates and a decrease in job rates. However, math and reading scores are still one of the lowest in the city of New York. And too many of our public high school graduates are still inadequately prepared for the future. We are creating new solutions to address these issues. For instance, this year we continue supporting our schools through capital funding. My office provided more than $20 million for much needed technology and auditorium upgrades all over the world. I have provided over $60 million in funding to nearly 400 schools. The Bronx is leading the way on creating a tech hub in Mount Haven and the workforce to staff it. Following our second Bronx Tech Hub, Tech Summit, we are proposing a computer science curriculum that would integrate technology into all subjects. This is the road to developing essential modes of thinking for life, learning, and the new economy. However, some problems still remain. The DOE has not been prepared for all of our students in our communities for their best chance at success. More than half of our students are trying to learn in overcrowded classrooms. And 60% of elementary and middle school kids were in overcrowded classes last year. And yet, not enough seats are being funded in the capital plan, even by the city's own calculations. The DOE should work towards capping all middle school classes at 22 students. individualized instruction. New York City must also offer more high school subjects with class caps that promote discussion and collaborative learning. We should pilot these programs in high needs districts that are currently lagging in graduation rates and other metrics and then phase them in citywide. This is the way to cultivate our future leaders and actively engage citizens. In the Bronx and throughout the city, we have a resource deficiency. We are asked to do more with less. The playing field is uneven. So to address this, I formed a task force with Brooklyn Borough President Eric Adams. And we issued a report with a series of recommendations for gifted education in New York City. At one of our task force hearings, we heard from a Brooklyn parent who spoke of her son's social life, which is fractured by his long commute. This inequity is a common theme in black and Latino communities. Throughout New York City, in 2017, black and Latino students made up a little more than 44% of specialized high school admissions test takers, but received just over 10% of the offers. I know that State Senator Jamal Bailey graduated from science, but mm -hmm. but you should not be the exception to the rule. And our once yeah. social economic background, race, neighborhood, or borough must no longer determine the quality of education of their public education. <laughs> should be forced to lead a fractured life. We will continue to support our CUNY system as well. <laughs> as we match our students' job skills with the needs of the city, we can create incentive programs that directly link CUNY graduates to jobs. The city should work to hire qualified CUNY graduates I mean, think about it. Think of all of the, the nurses from Bingham College.
who will contribute their talents to the health and hospice corporation. And how about all the new business majors who can add value to the economic development corporation? pipelines for architects and engineers from city college by leveraging HPV. We should implement tax credits and offer preferences on city contracts to companies that hire recent CUNY graduates. So we must build bridges to success through synergy. I know firsthand how well the CUNY education can be taken on the road.
We have directly funded the creation of nearly 8,000 new affordable housing units with nearly $52 million in capital funds. By any means, by any measure, ladies and gentlemen, these are unprecedented numbers. <laughs> this includes half a million dollars to new destiny housing for survivors of domestic violence. <laughs> Capital Charities, we allocated $750,000 for Second Farms Affordable Housing, which provides quality housing for the formerly homeless. We also provided $600,000 in funding to save senior LGBTQ housing. Which will be the first of its kind in New York City. See, it is up to every neighborhood to do our part to house those among us who need the most help. We are also fighting displacement and homelessness by implementing our right to counsel legislation. <laughs> this new law, thanks to the city council, guarantees tenants access to an attorney, thereby preventing eviction, and it works. We have already seen 15%, a 15% drop in eviction in Bronx zip codes where the right to counsel has already been done. <laughs> this law is doing away with the unfair imbalance of the scales of justice. We are also keeping residents in their homes as neighborhoods change. I say this because our negotiations on the Jerome Avenue rezoning has set the tone for tenant advocacy in the city. We were able to secure agreements from the de Blasio administration on several strong tenant protection programs, including a certificate of no harassment, a private program which forces landlords to prove they do not harass their tenants in order to get permits to make significant alterations to their homes. Vanessa Gibson, our city councilman, will be in The city also agreed to new parkland and, and a task force to identify and protect buildings of concern. Additionally, the city has committed to guaranteeing more units with deeper affordability. My office has also identified more than 2,000 affordable units that need to be actively preserved and rehabbed by the administration as part of the proposed Jerome rezoning. Uh, I would like to take this moment to thank the Bronx Coalition for Community Vision for their advocacy. Trans, uh, tremendous transformative potential. And ladies and gentlemen, whatever we do there, this rezoning has to work for everyone, especially the tenants and the small businesses in the rezone neighborhood. In the coming days, we will be counting on Vanessa Gibson and the city council to finalize the best possible agreement with the city on Jerome and to ensure that the administration keeps all of its promises. The New York City Housing Authority is also facing a crisis of confidence. Crime persists, buildings are dirty, repairs are late, they're made at all. And of course, residents are being left out into the cold. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, we find out that the city has failed to properly inspect apartments for lead paint, putting children at serious risk. Things have to change. As I said I would in the State of Borough Address last year, I have taken action and my office has led on these issues. Back in November, my Bronx Public Housing Task Force issued a report outlining several concrete steps that the city can take to improve public safety 
in public housing. I have also called for state oversight in Niger. Given, <laughs> given the city's inadequate response to the issue of lead, of lead testing, a state appointed monitor is the only credible way to improve Niger. And just look how badly the agency is handling its ongoing heat crisis. When I press NYCHA to address heat and hot water deficiencies, they have told me their problems are money, manpower, and efficiency. So I have a solution, or solutions. I mean, did you know that nearly half of all NYCHA boilers citywide need to be replaced today? Mm -hmm. yeah. Today. That is why I, along with nearly 60 elected officials, including three borough presidents, three members of Congress, 20 city council members, 10 state senators, and 22 assembly members, have called on NYCHA to call it what it is and to declare an emergency. <laughs> the agency has told me that their hands are tied. But they have yet to give or present a credible counter argument. To put it into perspective, the new Mario Cuomo Bridge was constructed in a shorter time than it has taken NYCHA to replace the faulty boilers that have passed in the world.